is the Compulsive DIY Very Tall uh, Welding Cart. Uh, it is uh, about um, seven feet tall. Uh, the cart is fairly narrow. It's just a couple of inches wider than the Sinker Wave 210 at the bottom. Uh, this is a Miller Sinker Wave 210 welder that's not on its own wheels and uh, not on the, on the casters. Uh, on the shelf above uh, the Sinker Wave 210 is a Miller Coolmate um, 1.3 gallon water cooler uh, and above that is my MIG welder and the shelf above there um, is empty because I'm planning to put a plasma cutter there but it's not there yet. Um, uh, so this is the front of the cart. Uh, this is the side that's facing me uh, when I'm welding. Um, the um, only drawback is that I cannot see the regulators on the gas cylinder, so I do have to walk around uh, and set my gas flow rates, but uh, they typically stay the same uh, for much of the project. Uh, but uh, not being able to see the flow meter uh, is a, uh, a minor, I would say, drawback of this design. So um, uh, the, purpose, uh, the purpose of this cart uh, was to store all of the um, little bits needed for different types of welding um, above and next to uh, the welding machines so I don't have to go anywhere else uh, to get anything I need to begin a welding project and I don't have any drawers or cabinets here in the shop uh, taken up by any other uh, welding supplies. So my uh, filler rod is at the bottom to um, weld uh, every kind of metal I've ever tried uh, to weld. Um, from mild steel to cast iron with some aluminum and stainless stuff in the middle. Uh, the consumables and the little bits uh, that are used on the TIG torches are in the jars uh, right here. Uh, I did have to eat uh, all of this marmalade. Um, but I survived and now I have glass jars to keep my um, uh, alumina cups and gas lenses. Uh, the leads are hanging above. I have a storage uh, shelf at the top where I, uh, right now is my Miller spool gun and uh, the homemade kit uh, for um, back purging argon is up there. Uh, I have some clamps here um, I have more clamps and I'm of course able to hang more clamps here. Uh, the very important tungsten uh, sharpener is here. When you're an occasional hobby welder you'll be uh, dipping uh, a lot of tungsten and uh, having to resharpen it. Um, this is the back of the electrical panel and this is the back of the cylinder rack right here. Um, so let's do uh, a close-up uh, of the uh, front. At the bottom is a Miller Synchrowave um, uh, 210 machine uh, where all of the hookups um, uh, are from the front of the machine and all of the settings uh, are uh, from the front of the machine. Um, because of how Miller Synchrowave 210 is designed with its uh, side opening door, which I'll show in another shot. Uh, one is not able to put anything on top of this machine and of course the thing you would want the most on top of this machine is the water cooler. Uh, so because it cannot rest uh, on top of the machine, uh, it is resting uh, over here on a shelf above and I have this dedicated switch. Uh, I'm going to be making a video about automatically switching this on and off uh, shortly. Um, and then above um, the water cooler is uh, my uh, MIG welder, uh, Millarmatic um, 211. And so uh, because my leads are stored on uh, this side of the cart, um, I can take them off very quickly. Um, and I'm ready to go within seconds. So for a quick um, MIG welding project, uh, the um, torch is ready to go. 
the machine is right up here. All of the machines are plugged in um, all the time. And uh, I'll be showing you in a minute the extension cord uh, that uh, can reach uh, any corner of this shop. So uh, all I have to do is uh, take the ground clamp off and uh, I'm ready to go. Um, now the other side of the cart. On this side uh, we have uh, access to machines. Uh, at the bottom is uh, my Miller Synchrowave 210. It has this compartment here where I mostly store uh, the, the foot pedal. Um, and uh, often in the midst of projects I actually store the ground cord uh, for the Synchrowave 210 uh, over here. Above it is the uh, water cooler with a spare coolant. Uh, and uh, here's the MIG welder. Uh, all of these MIG machines have doors on the same size, which kind of facilitates the design of this cart. Um, so this is, of course, where the spool of uh, MIG wire goes. And above here is a uh, space for my uh, future uh, plasma cutter. And storage for my other supplies is up on top, my uh, TIG welding armrest, about uh, which I'm ha I have a video, uh, lives up on top there. Um, it's hard to see. Yay, there is the there is the TIG welding armrest. I can I can just reach it uh, to take it off the top. On the back of the cart is the space where I can put the cylinders uh, in and out. Um, and the and my uh, long extension cord. Uh, so uh, this cord um, allows me to wheel this cart uh, to any location in this shop, which is uh, all that it needs to do. And it's actually two extension cords uh, taped together, the 240 uh, for the welders and the 115 uh, for the water cooler and the tungsten grinder. Um, we can talk quite a bit about how uh, welding gas is uh, sold by our welding supply houses to the DIY crowd. Um, this uh, 80 cubic foot cylinder is the largest cylinder that I can take home uh, from the welding store. Uh, so I have uh, three cylinders in here, uh, two um, argon uh, cylinders and one uh, C25, which uh, about fits. Uh, the proportion of the projects that I do. Uh, this shelf uh, under the helmet, which I currently use to store gloves, can of course be removed if uh, taller cylinders uh, uh, became uh, available. Everything I ever use for welding is on this cart. Um, it's uh, easy to reach. Nothing is hidden away. I don't even have to open um, a drawer or a door uh, to grab one of those leads and uh, start welding. Um, the space above most parked welding carts just contains room air and uh, that may not be the most efficient uh, use of space. So um, consider a really tall welding cart, it works for me.